How many of y'all know fear doesn't stand a chance when we believe and we stand upon who Jesus Christ is? Amen. He is awesome. Amen. This is Horseman's place this morning. When darkness tries to roll over my bones, when sorrow comes to steal the joy I own, in brokenness and pain, you are my hope, my firm foundation, my firm foundation.
of the shadow plays. Can you do that? But I, I, you know, I was, I was sharing with Shelly earlier. So I'm excited about uh, the message for today. I was excited about the one last week. This last little while, in fact, is when I sat down and really figured out we've been dealing with who you say I am for actually the last three months. Uh, when I went back and actually counted all the videos that we put online, I'm so dealing with that. And then last week we started dealing with the thought. You know, now after all this, after what we went through all these past three months, when we're listening to what the Word of God says of who He says I am, what what are you to do with that? What now? Then last week I shared with you. Understand that you are called and sent. Oh, for you to say something. I am. I am, I am called and sent. You know that, that, that we need to understand it. That, that He has done it for us. So today I'm thinking about this phrase here, and I say again, talking about now what? And I have this. Imagine. The possibilities. Now, before we get into the message this morning, I just want to um, ask you a couple questions and, and have you give me back some answers, okay? Who here knows who Jesus is? All right. Who's here ever read anything about Jesus? All right. Okay. Can you tell me some of the different works or miracles he has done? He turned water into wine. Okay. What else? What else? What else? He raised the dead. Do what? Just sight to the blind. What else? Heal the leper. Okay. Walk on water. What else? Feed the people. Fed the five thousand. Then fed the the, uh, the four thousand. All right. So he did it twice. What else? He himself rose from the dead. Um, we made, made the deaf hear. Um, anything else? Laying the walk. Yeah. He did walk through the walls. Through the walls. Um, but as you see, he, he did a lot of amazing miracles. Of course. None of us, if you know anything about the Bible, none of us, or if you believe in God, none of us, we're not surprised by that happening. Why? Because he, he, was, the incar he was God incarnate. He was the Son of God. He was, he was, he was the Son made flesh. So he, had the, you know, he, he was 100% man, yet 100% God. So when we read these things about Jesus, um, we're not surprised because we say, of course Jesus could walk on water. Of course Jesus could speak peace to the storm. Of course Jesus could make the blind See, the, the lame walk, the deaf hear. He could restore the withered hand. You know, of course he could do all that because he's God. He's Jesus. He's God. So, you know, we really don't have a, a, a big problem with that. And I sort of started to hint about this. I started to talk about this last week. And I, and I didn't feel released to really dive away from, from that type of thought process. So, to come with, so, so I think God wants to go a little bit further into this thing this week. Hence why I put up there, now what? Imagine the possibilities. You may say, but Pastor, what do you mean, imagine the possibilities? I read this, some of the verses I'm reaching today I read last week, but I want you to hear these verses with this thought in your mind. Imagine the possibilities. Imagine the possibilities. In John chapter 14, verses 12 through 14, this is what we're reading. It says, I, this is Jesus speaking, he says, I tell you the truth, anyone who believes in me will do the same works I have done, and even greater works, because I'm going to be with the Father. You can ask for anything in my name, and I will do it, so that the Son can br bring glory to the Father. Yes, ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. Now, real quick. He says, I tell you the truth, anyone who believes in me will do the same works I have done, the greater works will go to the Father. Okay. We just named some things, didn't we? This, here's the Son of God telling those who believe in this. <laughs> so I want you to sit there and imagine the possibilities. Imagine, truly imagine for a second, you being a follower of Jesus Christ, you being a believer of Jesus Christ, really imagine what He's declaring over your life today. I know, uh, I think it was about a month ago, I was, so we were talking a little bit about something like this in one of the messages, and I, I, Yvonne's here, so I always pick on her a lot. I know she, she, she doesn't like to be picked on, so that's why I pick on her. That's why I draw attention to her and all that stuff. Yeah. See, but I know, I know, I know that's a bad story. Forgive her for her lying. We know it's just trying to avoid her from using her, so hopefully we can just, okay. And I brought up, and I brought up the, the, the account that the Bible tells about, I think Will's one who brought it up, 
about feeding the 5,000. Feeding the 5,000, also feeding the 4,000. And how Jesus with, you know, with the 5,000, it was just uh, two fish and five loaves of bread, how he fed, it says 5,000 men, not including women and children. So, I mean, it's, it's estimated to be as many 15 to 20,000 people there that he fed with just that amount of stuff, them being God. And of course, you know, many times when we think about certain we, we, we think, you know, well, yeah, Jesus did it to the Son of God. But you need to really understand. So I'm telling you, imagine the possibilities here. Mm -hmm. Because here's, here's the question I want to ask you. Is there anything impossible for God? Okay, that was in there. Now, let me ask you this question. Is there anything impossible for us? Yes. yes. Most definitely. We, we are finite beings. We, we have limits to ourselves. We can sit there and say all we want, you know, we can sit there and say, I'm going to jump 20 feet in the air, and without probably the aid of a trampoline, we're not going to jump 20 feet in the air. I mean, Michael Jordan had some vertical jump, but he could jump 20 feet in the air. All right? So we understand that we ourselves, we have limitations. But what you need to understand is you being a believer in Jesus Christ, that all of a sudden is a game changer. That, that is a whole situation changing. Because, you said, because here's the thing. When you're connected to, to Jesus, who are you connected to? You're connected to the God of the universe. And what did we just say about the God of the universe? Is there anything impossible for the God of the universe? No. I mean, of course, we, we could be dumb and say this. Well, I know something God can do. He can't lie. The Bible says that. I tell you something else God can't do. He can't make a stone so big that he can't lift it. <laughs> Let that one sink in for a second. <laughs> yeah, you know. Um, you know, we can be silly about things sometimes and just but I really want you to I'm really I'm really trying to help you understand. I really want to, 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 to stir inside of you this belief of truly imagine the possibilities because you are a believer in Jesus Christ. And because what he said, this again, these words that are happening, these are words that Jesus himself spoke. I want you to really imagine the possibilities, what he's trying to break loose and bring forth in your life. You just sometimes you just have to be radical enough and just crazy enough to believe it. Jesus, you said it, I believe it. And I'm going to step out in faith. I'm going to step out in faith and do this thing. So again, this is why I'm saying, imagine. Now what? Imagine. The possibilities, because you know we already we already went through 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 the past three months and talked about who the Bible says we are, declaring that we are loved, that we are a child of God, that God is pleased with us, that we are His masterpiece, that we are chosen, that that we are royal, that we are holy, that we are His very own possession, that we've been called out of darkness into light, and and, and because of that we can now show His good work, and then that means that we're called and sent. So I just gave you a synopsis on everything there. So I want you to, to really understand and, and think about, imagine the possibilities. Imagine the possibilities. And again, I shared these scriptures here with you last week also. I'm going to dive into something else here today. But, but I shared these verses with you also last week. In Matthew chapter 10, verse 1, it says, And Jesus called his twelve disciples together and gave them authority to cast out evil spirits and to heal every kind of disease and illness. Now this... This here actually takes place before he uttered what we were talking about up there, the, the verse that we read before this. Okay? So at this time, Jesus, he's getting ready to go someplace. He says, what I want you to do, I want you to prepare a way for me. I want you to prepare for people to, to, to know who I am. And I want, you, I want you to go there and declare this kingdom message. But when you go there, he says he gave authority and cast out evil spirits and heal every kind of disease and illness. And then verses 7 and 8 of that same chapter, it says, Go and announce to them that the kingdom of heaven is near. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cure those with leprosy, cast out demons, give as freely as you have received. Now again, I want you to understand this. Jesus commanded them to go. And with us, he gives us the command of the Great Commission. Go and, and what? Make disciples of all nations. Doing what? Declaring all this stuff. But also, if you jump, if you read Mark chapter 16, I don't have it in my, in my notes today, but read Mark chapter 16 about what the commission he gives them there. And the commission he gave them there, what I'm telling you about today here, about going out and healing the sick, raising the dead, I'm here, here again, like that's why I speak to you, Pastor, are you telling you to go out and do this stuff? Yes, I am. 
Because again, I want you to understand there's nothing impossible with God. And if you're a truly a believer in Jesus Christ, and if Jesus uttered those words, that these works that I have done, these same words you shall do, and even greater work, I know a lot of times people try to say, well, what, what he's talking about there is his love. No, he, he doesn't put a limit there. He says works. So what does that include? All of them. It includes all of them. You are only limited by your faith in what you allow God to do as far as what He'll do in your life. I, I need you to understand. So again, I'm trying to start to imagine the possibilities this morning. Because also in Luke chapter 10, verse 9, we read this. And Jesus speaking, He says, Heal the sick, tell them the kingdom of heaven is near you. And that was the same portion of Scripture that later on we read. It says, when they came back, they came back in amazement. Jesus said, you know, even Jesus, even demons are subject to us through your name. Evil spirits are subject to your name. Understand, with that being said, understand there is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is delivering power. In other words, you know, we, we have, and I've talked about this in the Baptist last, we have an epidemic running through our nation right now. They call it the epidemic, the, 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 the um, opioid epidemic. Yeah. The opioid epidemic. There is an answer for that. Yes, I know treatment and all that stuff can be helpful. But I'm talking about there is an answer for that. And that answer is Jesus. He is the one who comes in and changes lives. Who rewrites stories. Who can take the old and make it new. And give you a brand new, make you a brand new creation. That's what the word declares. So again, so why is it unconceivable inconceivable that, that, that he won't do these things when he tells us to expect these things? Expect them. So again, imagine the possibilities today. And I'm going to share with you an account that's in the book of Acts. So th this is not involving Jesus physically here on this earth. <clears throat> and, but I want you to understand that as we looked at this account, the disciples understood that when Jesus said, these works that I do, you should do also. They understood that since he said that, they could do this. And again, and here's another reason why they understood that. Not too long before this, they, they watched him be beaten and die on a cross. And, and, their, and their world was shattered because they were not expecting that all to happen. They, they, they believed it was the Messiah because they saw the mighty miracles that he did and they saw what he taught and, and how he taught it the love of the Father and how to be connected to God the Father and all that stuff he taught it and all of a sudden when it seemed like everything was going great boom he dies but he warned him ahead of time told him ahead of time so guys you know, this is going to happen don't worry about it he said you will see me again but again it just it didn't sink in but then as we know, of course, that's why, why we celebrate on Easter Sunday. Why do we celebrate Easter Sunday? He died on the Friday, but what do we celebrate Easter Sunday for? He died on the Friday, but he rose on a Sunday. And he rose to live forevermore in a glorified body. And literally what, what happened was when he rose from dead, he literally proved to his disciples that what he said is true. And can you count it? So hence, because of that, they realized that since he said, these works that I have done, you shall do also. And when he told them, again, it didn't begin to register his mind. Hey, think about it back when, when he told us, he sent us out the two by two. He says, go heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the leopards, do this stuff. He says, that happened. Again, we know it's here, but he told us, because I'm going to the Father, you're going to be able to do these type of works and greater works. So they realized since Jesus said that, guess what? That means it can do it what? It will happen. It can happen. All we have to do is take him at what he says and believe in him and let, just do it and let him take care of the rest, right? So I'm going to give you so. So this is after the resurrection, and these are two of his disciples now that I'm going to, going to give you an account about. But what you're saying is they, the reason why they did this because they understood, they saw the miracles he did, they saw the miracles that they were able to do also, but because of his resurrection, it proved to them emphatically that he is the Son of God. So, so they did not hesitate in doing things in his name. Especially after the resurrection. Especially after the day of Pentecost. When they were do with power from on high. In Acts chapter 3, starting, starting with verses 1 and 3, this is what we read. Peter and John went to the temple one afternoon to take part in the 3 o'clock prayer service. As they approached the temple, a man lame from birth, so 
First off, we know this guy, but he could not walk. And how long has he been that way? What does it tell us? He's been that way ever since he's been born. Ever since, ever since he's been in existence, uh, so which meant as a child, I guess he didn't crawl or anything. He just, he was there. A man lame from birth was being carried in. Each day, he was beside the temple gate, the one called the beautiful gate, so he could beg from people going into the temple. And when he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for some money. Now, before I run any further, I'm going to say this. Now, Jesus frequented the temple area often. He went there many times. Several of his miracles were performed at the temple. Now, and we, we know by the scripture what it says there, that they took him there how often? Every day. Each day. They took him there daily. He was there to say, now why, now why Jesus, he didn't encounter Jesus while I was down here? We, you just said, well, why didn't Jesus take care of this? You need to understand this. There's certain reasons why Jesus did because literally, Jesus being God, he knows the future. He knew that one day Peter and John were going to be walking that way and this dude's going to be standing there. Well, I'm standing there. He's going to be there. He's going to be there. So Peter and John are approaching this scene. And here's this guy that's been there. And he, and this guy, when he sees Peter and John about to enter, he asked him for some money. But I want you to, look, let's read the next three verses here and see what happens. And Peter and John looked at him intently, and Peter said, look at us. In other words, Peter saying, we have a message for you. We have a message for you. We have a message here. Again, how do we know this? Because Peter said, look, look at us. The lame man looked at them eagerly, expecting some money. Because initially, if someone was to get his attention and say, hey, look at us, he was thinking, of, well, they're getting ready to be generous and, and put a little bit of something in my hand to help me out here. And listen to Peter's statement. But Peter said, we don't have any silver or gold for you. Now, again, if, if there was a long pause, I'm not saying there was, I'm just saying, but if there was, but, but in, 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 in the matter of time from when Peter said that to the words, the next words begin to issue forth, it's amazing how much can happen in splits of seconds in your mind. Who's here, you know, something going on also, but just in a matter of a split of a second, how many thoughts just sort of flood your mind? It's amazing how, how quickly that can go through your mind, isn't it? And see, and you don't know, in this guy's mind, he probably said, saying, you know, then what in the world are you bothering me for? If you're not going to give me anything, what? You know, what? Well, you want me to look at your clothes or something? Tell you you're really fine today or something? <laughs> We don't know what to do with saying because I mean, that's, that's just me being me, okay? Just, just throwing it out there. But he says, we don't have any silver or gold for you. But I'll give you what I have. I'm going to stop here a second. A lot of us may not have a lot. So we think. But if you're a believer in Jesus Christ this morning, again, who is Jesus? He's God the Son. You have God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. He is God the Son. Cindy, what does God own? Everything. The Bible declares He owns the cattle on a thousand hillside. He's, the, the Bible declares the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The universe he spoke into existence. In fact, it says he can, he can, measure, he can measure an endless universe in the palm of his hand. Wow. Which is declaring there that God's bigger than the universe. How, how, can, how can you be bigger than something infinite without being infinite yourself? And then something. He's all that and a bag of chips. <laughs> <laughs> Super 
Many times we think we don't have a lot, which in an earthly sense, in an earthly sense, in a completely earthly sense, we may not really have a lot compared to somebody else. I mean, I know I don't have a, a lot compared to the CEO of Amazon, because you know, he is now the richest man in the world, worth over $120 billion. Okay, I, I might have $1,200. <laughs> you know? Um, but a lot of times we think we don't have a lot. But you need to understand, you and God have everything. That's right. Why is that? Because God has everything. You and God are a majority. Why is that? Because God all by himself is a majority. Peter realized that. He said, I don't have silver and gold, but I'll give you what I have. And see, what again, imagine the possibilities. When you truly realize who is with you, when you confess who Jesus Christ is in your life, confess Him to be your Lord and Savior, when you truly realize who that is, what I have, for it's a sick end, what I have, what do you have? I have Jesus. And I'll give you. And see, things with Him. Nothing is impossible. What I have, I'll give you. He says, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, get up and walk. See, a lot of times we read this stuff. Again, we, we, we sometimes take on this mindset, well, well Pastor, yeah, Jesus did this, but, but Pastor, that was Peter and John. That was Peter and John. Pastor, that was Peter and John. Yeah, they were they, they were they were one one of the original twelve called. They they were in the inner circle, Pastor. The inner circle. When Jesus pulled three aside, they were two out of three. Peter and John, Pastor. Peter and John. I'm not Peter, I'm a John. Can you understand? There have been just like we are. There is absolutely, if you are a believer in Jesus Christ this morning, there is absolutely no difference between people who <coughs> Because they had to go by the way of the faith of Jesus Christ the same as we had to go. The only limitation is the limitation we place on our mind. Or what we place on Him saying, well, when we try to say, well, they're super Christians. And if you really want to think that, understand that one time Paul called Peter to the back when he was out doing some certain things. Because he says, You're not, what you're doing is not right, Peter. I'm talking about Peter, St. Peter. He said, He called him and got right in his face. He said, What you're doing is wrong. I don't want to get into that so but again. So because sometimes we, we think of these people because they're in the Bible, we think that. They're so super spiritual. They're, man, they're, they're, they were human beings, just like you and I. Guess what? Peter and John would get sick from time to time. Do you get sick from time to time? Hmm? It's a shocker. You're like them. <laughs> Peter and John would get mad from time to time. Do you get mad from time to time? It's a shocker. You're <laughs> just like them. <laughs> I'm not going there. <laughs> Like, like they're demigods. They're, they're half God, half man or something. They, they weren't. They were people just like you and I. And again, and that's why I'm trying to start thinking. Imagine the possibilities this morning. That when Jesus truly uttered this, when he said, these works that I have done, did you see me do these same works you will do because I'm going to the Father. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. That the Father will be in the name. You know, so so I want you to imagine the possibilities. And that's why I brought up this thing. You see, but I, but Pastor, you brought up Peter and John. Hence why I had to get you to understand you're like Peter and John. 
If you, if you, if you know Jesus Christ, they had to come to, through the cross the same way did that we did. They had to come through faith the same way we did. Now again, the only difference may be here, and I'm going to throw this in here. This was also after the day of Pentecost. And I'm, again, we, we'll talk about this sometime later on in the future. But, 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 they, but they were filled with the Spirit. And I know a portion of the Spirit comes to get salvation. And, and, and this is another thing. I'm not getting into that today. <coughs> but whatever they have to allow this miracle to take place, God has made available to you. He has. So understand as we go through this. Then, then, then the account continues, and it says in verses 7 and 8, it says, Then Peter took the lame man by the right hand and helped him up. As, as he did, the man's feet and ankles were instantly healed and strengthened. Now understand, understand. When did the miracle take place? Peter said, I'll give you what I have in the name of Jesus Christ. I'll you know, rise up and be healed. You told him that. But Peter exercised his own faith by reaching out, taking him by the hand, and then helping him up. And it says the moment that he helped him up, see, today I figure since I already said you might not be Peter put his faith in action by reaching out, helping out the man that the scripture tells us what? As he did, the man's feet and ankles were instantly healed and strengthened. Now get this. Understand this. How long has this guy been crippled? Since birth. Now, has anybody here ever, who's here like ever had like a, a knee replaced or had to have a hip replaced or, okay, all right, all right. After you had that knee replaced and you, you, were, you were laid up for a little bit, what did they have to teach you to do? Right, did they have to show you how to do, right, how to function with it. But the thing is, which really should be real difficult for you because, right, what were you doing before you went in that place? You were walking. So, so walking would just be something that, okay, all right, I just have a new piece of equipment in there. You know, it's a little bit harder now since it's still, maybe I can put it through a black wall. <laughs> but, yeah. Um, but it was something you already knew how to do. See, again, you sometimes we sort of say, yeah, it's a great miracle. His, his ankles were strengthened and all that stuff. But, but again, the miracle didn't just stop with that. He jumped up, stood on his feet, and began to walk. And then walking, leaping, and praising God, he went into the temple with him. So not, not only were his ankle bones and everything strengthened and healed, immediately he was given the knowledge and ability not only to walk and the, and the muscle strength, not only to walk, but to leap. I guarantee he did a little Holy Ghost run <laughs> and praising God. And again, just imagine the possibilities. Like I said, Peter showed his complete confidence in the healing power of Jesus by helping the man to his feet. And in return, it helped this man to fully activate his faith. See, sometimes it's not enough for us just to say the word and pray the prayer. Sometimes we might need to make a little bit of a motion to help them, to, to, to let them know that, yes, I fully believe this. See, again, I wouldn't tell you this if I had, I mean, I, I've been in service, and I know some especially talk about Hanover Barney Street when Pop was down there, just some of the other um, crutches being attached to walls and wheelchairs and all that stuff. I mean, I, I, I've seen people in, in wheelchairs when the power of God hit them, get up out of that wheelchair and, 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 and walk around the altar, jump around the altar and all that stuff. So again, I, I know, I know what he can do. And I want you to understand that, that this isn't available for just a few. This is available to those. He says, if you believe in me, those who believe in me. So imagine the possibilities. 
And verses 9 through 11 says this, And all the people saw him walking and heard him praising God. And when they realized he was the lame beggar that had, they had seen so often at the beautiful gate, they were absolutely astounded. They all rushed out in amazement to Solomon's colonnade where the man was holding tightly to Peter and John. Imagine the possibilities. And the reason why I'm telling you to imagine the possibilities is because really, where I want you to go, yes, I want you to have faith that God will do miracles, that Jesus will do miracles for you. Amazing miracles. The miracles that He did, those same miracles He will allow to flow through you to touch other people's lives. I believe that with everything's in me. But you have to be willing to, 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 to believe that also. But that's not the end game that I'm going for. And that is not the end game that Jesus is going for. And that's not the end game that the disciples were going for, that Peter and John were going for. Because it says here, again it says here, and all the people saw him walking and heard him praising God, and when they realized it was a lame beggar that had seen so often a beautiful gate, they were absolutely astounded. They all rushed out in amazement to Solomon's colony where the man was holding tightly to Peter and John. Now listen to what verse 12 says. Peter saw his opportunity and addressed the crowd. Really not really important when he, it is important when he says after that, but it's not important to necessary to our conversation per se. When he saw his opportunity, he addressed the crowd. People of Israel, he said, what is so surprising about this? And why stare at us as though we made this Man walked by our own power or godliness. And verse 16 says, With faith in the name of Jesus, this man was healed, and you know how crippled he was before. Faith in Jesus' name has healed him before your very eyes. See, I want you to imagine the possibilities so you can use the miraculous to open the door to speak to the spiritual blackness in other people's lives. To where you're believing that God's going to move you so much to where it opens that door of opportunity to where you can truly share who Jesus is. And again, I know we have to live a lifestyle, man. I know we have to live the love of Christ. And, 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 I, and I'm, we, we, yes, do that. But I'm telling you, we're, we're, Josh and I were talking about this the other night. We are living in a culture that is becoming more and more secular. They're becoming more and more spiritual, but not in the spiritual way that we would like them to become. But they're also becoming more and more secular. More and more of not, not necessarily believing in a God. And you need to understand, this is, it, yeah, in Israel, the, people, the disciples were talking to people who believed in God. But once they left there, they went to a polytheist. Society that believed in multiple gods and all this stuff, or no gods at all. So these signs and wonders went with them. Not to show how great they were, but to show the power of God and to, show, give, to give them the door of opportunity where they could speak who Jesus is. And we, honestly, we're getting increasingly back into our nation. Understand, we're not, we're not a Christian nation anymore. Because less than 50% of our country declares to know Jesus Christ. So that means we're not a Christian nation anymore. We need to get back and say, Lord, use me in whatever way you can. To let the gospel message go forth. Truly, that signs and wonders follow us wherever we go. So again, hence why I'm trying to tell you, imagine the possibilities. Really understand what Jesus has made a brother to you. And go out in faith. Speak his word. Speak healing and deliverance over people. And Activate your faith by, by interacting with them and let them come alive and let God will take care of the rest. And then as you see the opportunity opens up, begin to speak to them through Jesus. So imagine the possibilities. I want to show you a little video clip right now of this account. 
And when it gets to the end, I'm going to share with you a little bit of something, which you'll see at the very end, and why it was so significant of what they showed at the end of the video. So there you just saw a video of our presentation we'll be talking about this morning. But again, as I said, I, at the end of the video, they showed him walking into the temple. I want you to under, truly understand, students, and this really has not a whole lot to do. It does have to do with message a little bit, but because he was born man, he was not allowed to enter the temple. He was born a Jew. He was born believing this one named Jehovah God. But because of his physical disability, he was not allowed to enter into the inner gates. He went into the outside, to the outer gate, to, to, the, to the outside area of the temple area. He was not allowed to enter in and truly worship God because of his physical condition. So, so the miracle that also took place there, yes, his ankle bones and everything received strength and he immediately was given the ability and the muscle tone to walk and lead and praise God. But not only that, he was given the freedom and the liberty to now walk into the presence of the Lord. See, literally, that's what Jesus came to do. We were all beggars and, and wounded and lame and everything on the outside. But when we asked Jesus Christ, he came in also and opened that doorway to where we didn't have to be on the outside anymore. We could go through this. The same is why I want you to imagine the possibilities and just truly allow the powers of Jesus Christ to work through you. And as the door opens the opportunity, not only will you do a miracle that way in your life, you seem like into a physical way or whatever, but the most important thing is you'll get the opportunity to open them up spiritually to who Jesus is and what he offers, which is the most important thing. But sometimes, or even many times. We need God to miraculously move to make that situation available so he can open up the door to where when the enemy tries to bring down, he, you know, it's a little hard to bring down against something that, 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 you know, these people knew this guy was lame from birth. So it's a little hard for the enemy to fight against that because even later on, you read the story of that later on, it says the, 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 the Jewish leaders of the temple, they couldn't say anything about this miracle because it was right there before them. See, when God does something, He does something where nothing can, people can try to make a try something, they can't say anything against it because He is the God of the impossible. We just have to be, be willing to, to, to believe that God, all things are possible with you. So imagine the possibilities. That's what I'm trying to pull out of you this morning. That's what I'm trying to instill in you today. Imagine that with me, nothing is and I want you to let loose your faith and let God declare who He is in your life like never before. The only person that's limiting how great He is in your life and I want to I want to loose that band through His Word. Just want to loose the, those chains or whatever it is on you to, to, to help you break free and realize that with Him all things are possible. Step out and walk in that faith and declare it to those you come in contact So in closing, I shared this last week. I'm going to read through these real quick. I said, I'm releasing you and sending you for today in the almighty, all-powerful name and authority of Jesus, the one and only Son of the everlasting and living eternal God. In John 20, verse 21, Jesus says, and again he said, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I am sending you. And in Acts 1, verse 8, it says, you will receive power and the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, and Samaria to the ends of the earth. So again, I'm telling you, go forth in the power of His Holy Spirit. Go forth and proclaim His name. Because again, Zechariah proclaims this in 4-6. Understand this, it's not about you, it's about Him. It's about always giving Him glory to Him. Because it says this, Not by might, nor by power, but by my Spirit, says the Lord. It's all through His Spirit. Understand, God is the God of the impossible. He's made this available for you. 
<coughs> are you going to grab a hold of it and be the, be the believer in him who Jesus says you can be? Mm. If you believe in me, these works that I do, you will do also. So go forth expecting the miraculous and imagine the possibilities. I'm going to ask our musicians to come. And I'm going to sort of, we're going to, we're going to have a time of prayer here. Because as we as we are here today, there are several among our fellowship who aren't able to be here. I know Kathy's not able to be here. She, she texted me this morning. Um, she was planning on being here Sunday. She, 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 I talked to her earlier in the week, and, and apparently this stuff that she had isn't completely out of her yet. The doctor put her on another round of antibiotics. So, uh, so we need to remember Kathy in prayer. Continue to remember Bill in prayer. I know um, little Jamie is not wealthy. He has some type of something draining yellow. Drainage coming out of his ear, and he has, he has an ear infection. Um, so, what? How I want to end this service today? First off, if you if you and yourself saying, Pastor, this is stirring up my faith, and, I, and I'm saying today, I, I want to talk about God. I'm starting to imagine the possibilities, and I want Him to use me for His honor and glory. So, if that's you this morning, I want to invite you to come and pray. But also, I want certain ones to stand in place for individuals who can't be here today. I want someone to stand in place for, for, uh, for Kathy. But again, again, I just want you to, you, you, you're going to be the, the, the physical person we're going to touch and pray for. I want someone to stand in place for Kathy today. I want someone to stand in place for Bill today. I know Chris is still dealing with, with her mess. So I want her to come up so we can pray for her today. I want Shelly to stand in for Jamie today. You, you, you can sing while while prayer. That's fine. It, 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 that's perfectly fine. All right. Uh, but I want I want you to come up, and, and I want you to truly come up in faith, believing, because I know that God is able to do this. Shame or, or, or something. Anybody? Okay. And again, by, by the way. Um, Nancy gave a report the other week about her, her, her grandson had some prayer done. So someone prayed for him. How's he doing? Yeah. Well, when he nothing too difficult for you. And we're coming to you in the power of your name. Because Lord, you said, if you believe in me, the same works that I have done, you will do also. And then before he left this earth, he told him, go, heal the sick. Read it in Mark chapter 16. Signs and wonders shall follow those who believe in my name. They shall cast out devil. They shall speak with new tongues. And it, and it goes through all this stuff. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall. We still serve a miracle working God. And those of you who want to help us pray, come on up, please. Come on up. Let us unite our faith. Jesus said, well, two or three are gathered together in my name. They are mine and this is them. We want to let our faith loose today. So right before we pray, I want us to sing this little song. It, it, it's not it's not a where a real prayer full-time song, but it's a song truly declaring about what we're talking about today. And it's this, it says, Through you I can do anything. Yes, I can do all things. Cause it's you who gives me strength. 
strength from nothing. 